There are many similarities between angels and demons, which I don't think people talk about very much, but they're both rational, personal spirits. They are persons just like you and I are persons. They have uh, a mind. They have an, a, will, a will, an agenda, an ability to communicate and interact with the, the other people and the circumstances around them. They are causal agents, just as we are causal agents. We use our fists or a pencil or some such thing, and they, they use spiritual means, non-physical means, but nonetheless those means are still very real, perhaps even more real than, than the means that we are used to. Um, I thought I would just sort of open this before we consider several differences between um, these spirits and just um, what is recorded in Revelation chapter 12 as the distinction between them. Um, 12, 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Um, and we read down a little bit, down to verse 7, And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael is a archangel. Uh, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And so one-third of the stars and elsewhere will deal with the Bible using the metaphor of, or the illustration of stars as referring to angels. Um, we recognize there's a similarity between stars and angels, right? Um, principalities and powers in heavenly places, and stars are in heavenly places. Um, angel of light, angels of light, stars give off light, right? There are similarities. Um, but let's go and let's recognize. Um, there's a um, one of the things that we've learned about spirits, which certainly angels have in common, is they have a certain type of power related to what kind of spirit they are, and they have access to information, right? And uh, evil spirits, because they are alienated from God, they are under His condemnation. They use their power and their information against God and against God's people. And we're going to talk about this as we go through the video. But um, evil, this, uh, demonic spirits, they're called unclean spirits. They're called angels of darkness. They're called Satan's angels. They are fallen. They are separated from God. They use their power to suppress to make sick, recall the spirit of infirmity oppressing the daughter of Abraham. They are counterfeit, recall Paul writes in um, to the Thessalonians that they um, have lying wonders. Um, I probably am going to do another video on witchcraft, but the angel, the evil angels, take advantage of the authority that God has given humans. And so they use, they deceive humans to come into agreement with the demons and they promise information, access to information, psychics, mediums, and they also promise access to power. Kill your enemies, uh, make yourself rich, get done whatever it is that you want to get done, change, change people's minds, get people out of your way. Something like that. Get what you want, basically. Um, and power and information can both be used along those lines. Um, and so we, we recognize that they... they uh, so certainly one difference in witchcraft is... Um, and, and you see the same thing in pagan religions where you suppose that you sacrifice a goat or your child or something to Molech. You, you sacrifice something. You do some kind of thing... A lot of times it involves blood. And then um, the thing that you do somehow gives you power over the god, little g. 
And so then the God has to, is somehow compelled to, to do your bidding, right? And so there's lots and lots of, of religions, pantheism, the notion that there's, you know, God of the hills and a God of the valleys and a God of the mountains and a God of the, you know, there's probably a God of nose picking. I don't know. There's a God of air, a God of water, a God of um, money, a God of coins, a God of just anything that you can think of, a God of food, a God of love, something like that. Um, anyway, so you, you use these sacrifices and these rituals in order to manipulate and control. And of course, you're doing it for yourself. The source and the thing that makes witchcraft evil and the thing, things that make these evil is that our source is to always be God, right? It is to always be God. Be, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Um, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Like there's just me so many scriptures of God telling people to seek him and rely upon him and devote themselves to him. And he will help and he will protect and he will heal and he will provide and he will lead and so on and so forth. But people um, don't want to do it God's way. And this like promise of power is seducing and it and it uh it sounds good frankly um one of the most sinister things and so the the opposite of this is angels minister right they're called ministering spirits and so while while angels god sends angels to um and angels are not manipulated by people because they they fear god and they obey god right and so the idea that they're going to listen to sinners and risk their relationship with God, like no way, not one chance in 10 trillion, trillion, trillion. No way, not gonna happen. They're not that stupid. We're that stupid, but they're not that stupid, right? Angels minister to people, they strengthen. The angel strengthened Daniel in Daniel chapter 10. The angel strengthened Jesus multiple times during his ministry. They give, they're messengers and they give information, right? So the, these demons, um, use their power to harm people and to tear down people and to Jesus, to oppress people and to cause illness in people. Um, one of the most probably evil things that demons do is speak as though they're God. And so they, I mean, can you, can you imagine, you know, somebody who's, who's seeking to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Remember, Jesus pr- promised that, that the Spirit would guide us to all truth. And he, he would uh, only say what Jesus told him to say. And so he's our mechanism for following Jesus. And so we suppose ourselves to be wise in seeking the guidance and counsel through the power of the Holy Spirit. But in fact, we may be hearing from a demon, which is why, and I, I sort of mentioned this in the Spirit and Truth video, is why we have got to recognize the fingerprint of the enemy and why we've got to be in God's word because we come to God in spirit and truth, not just in spirit. If we just assume a priori that whatever spirit we're hearing from is the Holy Spirit, because what else spirit would it be? The devil has no truth in him. He's a seducer. He's a resistor. He's a liar. He's a murderer from the beginning. If he can get you to believe that he's speaking like the Holy Spirit, he's thrilled to do so. Because then if if if, if you believe that it's the Holy Spirit speaking, then you're probably going to Give heed, you know, give credence to, you're going to heed what it is that's said, you know, right? Um, spirits are called unclean. Um, Jesus said in John eight forty four, there's no truth in him. They're called seducers, Paul writes to Timothy. Uh, doctrines of demons, they, like they teach with the, 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 the word sophistry actually means that you're, teaching something but you have the intent of deceiving in your teaching and in your doctrine that's exactly what demons do um you see this in the the occult and new age movements they promise access to information whether it's departed spirits ghosts um information you know about i don't know investing or making decisions about all different kinds of things um you see king saul um of Israel seeking a medium at Endor, the witch at Endor, to um, get information about what he should do. Um, 
uh, John in 1 John calls this the spirit of error, 1 John 4, 6, we are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us, uh, he that is not of God heareth, heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Um, so in the, the, the New Age and the occult, you know, spirit guide, seeking, seeking the supposedly innocuous, friendly uh, spirits that are gonna, just going to be like, oh, you know, I'm so much more powerful than you and I'm invisible and you can't see me, but I'm just going to help you. And you have to just believe it because how do you know? Like, how do you know? And of course, whenever we're painted this picture of the devil being the father of lies and a seducer, and ultimately his job is to separate us from God, if he can get us to believe that there's a source of information that's going to help us, when in fact it's actually going to hurt us, he's absolutely thrilled to do that. There's no uh, pang of guilt. There's no conscience. There's no, uh, you know, I hate God's children, but, you know, I, I don't, I don't hate them that much. Like, I don't actually want the ruin. Like, I just want to, you know, like, poke a little fun at him. Like, no, he, if he could, if he could take a blade and just slide it right across your throat and cut your throat, if the Holy Spirit would, or if the Trinity would give him leave to cut your throat, uh, he would. Like, in the, in the picture of Job, all the things that he did to Job, do you, do you think that if God had said, you can take his life, do you think the devil would be like, wow, now that's too far. And I'll smite him to the ends of the earth, but take his life. Like, ah, uh, like he, he just, he'd slice his throat and he wouldn't think another thing about it. And he'd go, can I kill someone else? <laughs> Who else can I kill? He wouldn't think anything about it. Um, the lying spirit. Uh, and we see, we see these spirits animating people and using people as their tools, right? Um, and so the lying spirit, which I, I don't have the verse right in front of me, but um, it's in, I think it's in the Kings and also in the Chronicles. But um, a, a spirit is so powerful in inciting lies that one spirit actually animates and quickens and inspires perhaps dozens or even hundreds of prophets to believe that what they're hearing is true. I mean, does, does anybody say... I know this is a lie, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like, don't, don't people at least, and honestly, I've been praying about this, why it is that people seem to give credence to the truth and want to claim to be in the truth. But isn't that what people do? Like, like, like who, who wants to say, like, I am knowingly in a lie and I am knowingly darkened and deceived? Like, who, who does that? I don't, I don't think that very, there may be some very, very tiny minority but I don't think that people do that. Like people usually will claim, you know, oh, I am true and you are false. I'm telling the truth and you're a liar. Like they, they, most people don't say, well, he's telling the truth and I'm a liar. And then the way that people would respond to that is, oh, I'm, you know, okay, you're a liar. I ain't going to listen to you anymore. Right. And so people, people claim to be in the truth. And, you know, remember Jesus said the blind leading the blind, like if they're, if they're truly blind, they think that they're right even though they're not right and they're leading, you know, like the Pied Piper leading everybody off of a cliff or something. 